Hello there. Welcome to your program, Security Reports, where we we'll get you informed, educated, enlightened, and most, uh, most importantly, updated on security issues anywhere it is happening. I remain yours and only, Ernest in Nuneku. And your lovely, Shirley Daniels. All right. On the program this week, now we all know that uh, Nigeria actually went out to do their voting and um, a lot happened in some states of the federation. We actually went out to zone two, Middle East zone two, comprising of um, Lagos State and Ogun, Ogun State. State. Now to actually um, monitor the elections and then see how it all went. Now in Lagos State, it was, it was actually a, a very, very peaceful election. Contrary to what a lot of people thought would happen, Lagos State was among the most freest states that actually had, there was no issue at all in most parts of the of the areas we went to. Anyway, I, I, think, I think for you, 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 you have a very good turnout. But in, in Ogu State, where uh, we were, uh, the turnout was a kind of a bit low because of, of the security block. You know, people said that the, uh, the, milit uh, the military had a lot of roadblocks there. So the turnout was, was quite low, was quite low. Well, we'll begin the program this today with the report we actually did on a Lagos State election. We actually followed the Commissioner of Police and CP Zuberu to go out. He, he was actually accompanied by the AIG Zone 2, went around to actually inspect some of the areas. Let's get you that report now. Gubernatorial and state assemblies elections are seen more as grassroots elections compared to presidential and national assembly elections, which is leadership from the center. The March 9, 2019 gubernatorial and state assembly elections is to produce leadership closer to the people. Security reports consigned for the safety and security of the electorate as they go out to exercise their franchise was in the commercial nerve center of Nigeria, Lagos State, one of the states with the largest voting population in the country with almost 7 million registered voters. Arriving at the headquarters of Lagos State Police Command Ikeja, a day before the commencement of the elections, we met the remaining badge of officers and men of the Nigerian police force who are on standby, fully ready to respond to any electoral disturbance in the states. The officers and men of the Lagos State Police Command were seen in high spirit, ready to carry out their constitutional responsibilities. <laughs> The Commissioner of Police Lagos State Command, CP Zuberu Moazu, on the day of the elections, after ensuring that his men have been fully deployed to different polling units across the states, set out in company of the Assistant Inspector General of Police, Zone 2 Command, AIG Lawa Shehu, and other police officers. CP Moazu and the entourage began the election security monitoring and supervision from Ikecha Metropolis the capital territory of the ever-busy and bustling Lagos State, which is now like a ghost town because of the restriction of movement ordered by government. After ensuring that voting is ongoing in Ikeja, the inspection and supervision team moved to Okota area of Lagos State, where there was an election violence during the presidential and national assembly elections. This time around, Okota was cool and calm, as CP Muazu had earlier informed security report that lessons had been learned on the previous Okota experience and measures had been put in place to foster a repeat of such occurrences. Voters could be seen queuing up orderly to exercise their franchise and security personnel comprising the Nigerian police and other security agencies ensuring that law and order is maintained. The inspection and supervision team toured most of the polling units in Sele, Itire, Sululere, and the densely populated areas like Ajegule and Olodia Papa, ensuring that the police officers and other security agencies carry out their duties as instructed by the Inspector General of Police, IGP Muhammad Adamu. During the inspection tour, the Commissioner of Police observed that some persons at the Tire area of the state were clustering at the spot which could result to security breach or the existing peace the state was enjoying. He stopped the convoy to address the persons. 
the law today is either you come out with your card and go and vote or you stay for house. Okay? Uh -huh. I know what people together here. You are not in your house. You are not voting. I don't like them at all at all. Okay? Please go home. And if you get card, go where you vote, go vote. You are not yet to catch any man, sir. But please thank you very much. Go home. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Amy, thank you. It was indeed a very busy day for the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Sipi Moazu and the team, throughout the duration of the governorship and House of Assembly elections, as the CPN ensured that his men performed optimally, giving every Lagosian the opportunity to cast their vote for any candidate of their choice without any form of harassment and intimidation. Security is so key. Everything is okay. It's under control. Yes. Yes. Even the last one, everything is under control and it's okay. Okay, we are cool. Yeah, no problem. We are okay. Nothing much. Yes. 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 For this Okota today, we thank God for today. No fight. Everything is successful. No fight. No change. Everything is No wa Allah for this Okota. We thank God for our, our area here. Area here. Yeah. Is Everything yeah. is free. No, Allah, no, Allah. No, Allah. All no our people here. Yeah. You can see. Why you people you come here? Yeah. Do people see Everything fight here? Yeah. No, Allah. Everything is going peaceful. Peaceful, not like fight. All of us today, yeah, we're happy today. It's not like last week where we say things they do shake, shake. The inspection and supervision team took a break at about 3:30 p.m. after voting had been concluded. In most parts of Lagos State, but resumed again at about 4:30 p.m. This time, ensuring that there was no disruption of the electoral process. CP Moazu and his team visited the four coalition centers in the Kaja Metropolis to ensure that the will of the people is not altered, as they have demonstrated in casting their votes. He, however, addressed some of the complaints made by some collecting officers. Complain yes. We are policemen who are serving the units. But as soon as uh, the units, the, the, those serving the unit, once the units are Submit. true, yeah. then there won't be any police officers for the no. police on the center. No, no, no. no, I, no I, I asked them, yes. and I said they are monitoring police units. No. As that is what we do. Let me tell you, we have done deployment this is the GSP charge of polling units. We have done you know. deployment of police units. Yes, you brought it. You brought yes. it. Yes, he has brought it with his men. Police men okay. who are the polling units. Okay. Are here okay. when their police are submitted. Okay. We have deployed men specially for the police center. All police center. So you have your own police men. Yeah. They will be here till you finish collection. All right. They will escort you to the local government. Very good. Very good. Very good. Have you started all your No, we have started. So you can see what we are doing. So we must have brought the other At one of the collection centers, the Commissioner of Police directed that party members who are not accredited party agents must leave the collection center or be arrested. Yes, sir. They are voting. Campaign has finished. No more campaign. The campaign is finished. No, no, no. no, no, no. They should go home. In the next four years. Every party is supposed to have one party agent. Sit down and watch and represent their, their party. Okay? So only party yeah. agents and electoral officers who are bringing results. Hmm? Yes, no candidates come here. Because if every candidate every party come here, will be no party officials will come here. Yeah. So let them take their first and start going to the party. Thank God you have seen for yourselves that there is no problem anywhere. Collision have started in the four world collision centers we have visited. You have seen adequate security in those areas and we have not received complaints from any of the lateral officers over the collision exercise. Each party is supposed to send a representative to the collision center. So only the party agents are allowed at collision centers. No candidates who have consented the election should come here. No party officials should come here. Only lateral officers who are bringing results and party agents, then our security personnel. So if any party uh, official finds himself here, or any candidate who has contested finds himself here, he's contravening electoral law. It's a natural offense, and he will be arrested. Security report later had an exclusive interview with CP Zubiru Moazu, 
in his office where he spoke on a number of issues. We have put in place all we discussed in Abuja with the IG, the new strategies we want to place. We have implemented them here in Lagos, you can see it. Then we have been talking since the last elections to groups and stakeholders. We have made press statements to encourage the people to come out their prudent security. So what you have seen today is a result of all these efforts we have done put together. That is why you see this election today in Lagos, very peaceful, security presence everywhere. And uh, we hope the coalition and uh, the rest of it all will go well. Too. Because I've put in a lot of structures in place for the coalition too. I also noticed that uh, you took a, a proactive measure by meeting uh, different stakeholders immediately after the presidential election, the Igbo community and the Alta community. Would you say that um, the result of that meeting has also paid off? Of course. In the meeting, we allowed them to tell us uh, their apprehensions and what they think we should do. So we took note of all we discussed in the meetings and we really implemented what we discussed. And one important thing is that we accepted a commitment from them that when they go back, they will take, talk to all their su subjects to ensure that there is peace today. And we have seen the results on the streets today. The reports I have are all positive. We didn't have any negative report from any area commander or DPO in Lagos. Voting started very well. And all through, we have been getting reports. There was no one single adverse report we got from anywhere except the delay in the initial takeoff in few places, resulting from uh, ad hoc staff complaining about allowances and so forth and so forth. And that one too was resolved by ANEC and voting continued. So we didn't have any major ugly incidents in Lagos. In furtherance with the electoral process, all attention was later shifted to the Yaba headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC in Lagos State where the final collation from the different local government areas will be collated before formally announcing the winner of the elections. As expected, entrance into the area of the state collation center was highly restricted, as no vehicle without authorization was allowed access. Security personnel could be seen everywhere ready to combat any form of breakdown. The state collation process started, preceded over by the state collation officer for the governorship elections Professor Iyitokbe Ogumbo Dede, and supported by the Lagos State Resident Electoral Commissioner and security officers led by the Commissioner of Police Lagos State, C.P. Mwazu. One after the other, the local government coalition officers presented votes of candidates as collated at the local government level, and at the end, the state coalition officer announced the winner of the Lagos State 2019 governorship elections. I Professor Eitope Ogumbo Dede hereby certify one that I was the returning officer for the Lagos State Governorship election held on the ninth day of March 2019. Two, that the election was contested. Three, that the candidates received the following votes. One, Joseph Ola Beckley, male, political party A. Total vote received 4122, 400, 4,122. 4,122. Two, Oluwa male, AAC, 1078 votes, 1,078, 1,078, 14, Papa Jide Olushala Sanwo Olu, male, APC, 739445, 739445, 739 votes. 33, Jimmy Agbaje, 
mail ttp 206141 votes to 106141 206,141 that Babaji Day of All Progressives Congress, APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law and scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Signed by me, Professor Eitope Ogumbadede, today, 10th day of March 2019. So, a general elections in the state. As life has now returned to normalcy, with the usual hustling and bustling, Lagosians are known for. <laughs> Ernest Enuniku, Secretary reports Lagos State. Welcome back from that report. It's very obvious that indeed what a lot of people expected in Lagos State didn't actually happen. It was a very peaceful and heat free exercise. Negotiants actually went out to exercise their franchise and they actually voted for who they thought would lead them in the next four years. Well, um, I think um, they have decided, the people have decided, yeah, and so let's just decided. see what happens. Um, I, the most important thing about this whole thing is the fact that the security aspect, you know, there was peace, there was, the election was peaceful and compared to that of the presidential election. I don't know if you notice the, the, the security balance in this no, whole no, thing. Actually, after the presidential election, a lot of anxiety because people felt this election actually is more about the people. So they expected a lot of chaos. But in Lagos State and Ogu State, what they expected did actually happen. It was actually peaceful. peaceful. People went out. They are voting. The voting, the, the elections were counted, and the winners emerged. And, and you know, in fact, it, it was it was a joyful thing from the people of Ogu State and that of Lagos State to to actually say their view. You know, when we had an interview with one or two people, they actually said they were happy that the security agencies were did in fact more than expected. We'll get to that report. The governorship and state assembly elections, which many feared would be filled with violence across states of the Nigerian Federation, turned out to be peaceful in most places. Though with pockets of violence in some states where political gladiators have refused to play by the rules. The elections of 9th March 2019 have produced new governors in some states, with some incumbent governors displaced and some others re-elected. Security report was in Ogu State to monitor the electoral processes, especially the role of the police, which have been vested with the authority to ensure the safety of lives and property of Nigerians with assistance from other security agencies. 
The Commissioner of Police, Ogu State Command, C.P. Ahmed Ileasu, accompanied by the Assistant Inspector General of Police, AIG Hosaya Hassan Kama, and other security agencies, supervised the activities of the personnel during the elections in the state, visiting some areas like Abiyokuta, the state capital, Ikene, Ikberu, Ijebode, and Shagamu, following the directive of the Acting Inspector General of Police, IGP Mohamed Adamu. Speaking with security report, the Assistant Inspector General of Police, AIG H.H. Kama, noted that security in Ogu State is calm as officers and men deployed across the state are well trained to carry out their duties. Residents of the state in different polling units and local government areas of the state in an interview with Security Report expressed their views on the issues of security while at the polls. Shuley Daniels, Security Report, Ogu State. Welcome back from Ogu State. We could see from, we can, we could hear from the people's, um, from the horse's mouth that security in Ogu State was, was more than peaceful. Um, kudos to the Nigerian police and other security agencies who came out in, in turns to make sure that Ogun State and had a peaceful election. Yeah, we must say kudos to Nigerian police. It's actually important that we thank them. They did a human's job to ensure that 
the elections were peaceful. Now, one other issue that actually came up was what they call voter apathy. People said the elections were so much militarized that there was the military were, the military were everywhere, that the protective men were just too much. And, and to some persons, that is why um, people didn't turn out to vote. But actually, to us here on Security Report, we believe if we have securities, that should boost your confidence to come out come and out actually and vote. vote. Exactly. So I, I, I don't see why if the military, the police are everywhere, and you have a clear conscience, and you have who you want to vote for, you True. just go out and vote. vote. But on that issue, we actually spoke with um, a security expert, Mr. Patrick Agbambu, where he actually analyzed some of these issues. Let's get to that interview now. Election is supposed to be a civil matter. Uh, people are to come out and cast their votes um, without any hindrance, without any uh, provocation or, or any pressure. Uh, but in Nigeria, we know that um, a lot of factors have led to the reasons why we have increased presence of security personnel during elections because of violence. Violence has become a bane of um, elections in Nigeria. Violence have prevented so many citizens from carrying out, exercising their franchise. And so um, the government has the responsibility to protect the lives of the citizens and also to ensure that uh, they freely uh, carry out, uh, exercise their franchise. So by providing enough security. So the presence of security men during election, it's supposed to uh, be a confidence building is a confidence building factor that we encourage them to come out to cast their votes and so i do not see it as a deterrent i see something that uh, it's uh, negative i see it as positive um some people have also queried uh, the presence of the military yes the military uh, not expected ordinarily to be uh, involved in elections but you know the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria empowers the nigerian army and nigerian military to aid the civil police, the civil police in terms of in internal security and all that responsibility. So when they are invited, and in this case, uh, there were uh, fears that they may be violent and so the military were invited to support. They are just on standby. They were not carrying out the electoral activities, so to say. Uh, they did not escort any materials. They were just on standby to be called in case of uh, any breakdown of land order. So um, the role of the military in this election that just took place, I must commend it. Uh, it's something that is, is positive and not negative. If not for the Nigerian military action in River State, there will have been lots of blood that will have flowed. Build up to this election, we came out with a security survey, security uh, risk assessment report uh, that uh, points that uh, River State is very, very high in terms of outbreak of violence. Um, uh, maybe particularly drawing from um, other previous elections where we have seen a lot of death, a lot of killing uh, take, take, that took place in River State. And um, the build up to this election particularly, we can see that the political gladiators were not ready to allow peace to reign. So uh, really, there was need for the military. And you know, the situation in Rivers, most times uh, it's uh, beyond the the firepower of the Nigerian police, and so uh, the military were to call it. But even with the presence of the military, some of the hoodlums, some of the, uh, those who were out to uh, create chaos, chaos came out. Uh, you, you remember that uh, just a few days to the presidential election, some uh, even military soldiers, uh, army soldier um, officers were killed. So they were that daring. And in this particular case, so there was need for the military and particularly the Nigerian army to take a pre proactive measure to ensure that uh, nothing like that happened again. And so uh, people who are accusing the army of excessive action really were are just out to achieve some mischief because really we monitored the situation. I particularly monitored uh, the, what happened in, uh, in River State and I can tell you that the military, other than one or two infractions by some personnel, which you cannot totally rule out from, because they are Nigerians, they are human beings, uh, generally the military and the Nigerian army perform very, very well. They deserve our commendation for what they did, and so that is the truth. Um, again, there was intelligence report that suggested that some people 
actually got the military uniform and accoutrement uh, to be used to, as, to impersonate the military and commit some, uh, some offenses. And so we can't rule out that some people that were on, on videos that were being circulated may not actually be military personnel themselves um, until investigation is carried out. Uh, the Nigerian Army have said that they're going to carry out a forensic investigation to find out truly what happened. And let's uh, hear, let's wait and see the result of that investigation. I'm sure that uh, it, will be, uh, it will come out to prove what really happened or, or who and who committed what crime. You know, like I said earlier, if not for the strong presence of the security personnel, both the Nigerian police and the military, many, many, many states of the Federation will have experienced inconclusive election, really, because um, violence will have been everywhere in the country. But thank God that the, the security agencies upped their game and performed credibly well. The performance of security agencies during the governorship and state assembly election was much better improvement than what was experienced during the presidential and national assembly election. So the security agencies did uh, excellently well this time around and that helped make sure that uh, we do not have much of the states that are inconclusive or being disturbed by, by, um, by violence. Yes, um, we have said this several times that politicians must play by the rules. Uh, before every election, there is what they call the Electoral Act, Electoral, the bylaws that guides what uh, politicians should do and political parties should do. Uh, but, you know, our Nigerian politicians have, have since refused to, to follow the, the rules of the game and uh, believe that they can do whatever they want to do. And that is the bane of our democracy. We want to plead with the politicians that they should please allow peace to reign. Because without peace, without uh, security, there can't be any meaningful development. So we'll call on, on those who have been elected to ensure that they uh, know that they have only four years. So you start preparing for, if you want to be the people to vote for you next time, not to use violence to get to office, but do the proper thing, then the people will vote for you. Welcome back. Now, it's very obvious from that interview that actually if you have security personnel everywhere um, trying to ensure there's peace, it shouldn't deter people from going out to exercise their franchise to ensure they actually vote for candidates of their choice. So if they didn't go out to vote, then it's a personal decision. Yes, exactly. It's not actually because of the security. Mm -mm, I, I, don't, I don't, actually don't think so too. I think I stand with you on this one. Um, for, for, the, for the security people to be present, like you said, it should have boosted people's morale, morale. to come out and do and, and exercise their, their, franchise. their franchise. Now moving forward, the Nigerian army in its determination to actually follow international standard received a delegation from the uh, European Union, um, uh, the COAS, Lieutenant General Yusuf Burotai, received a delegation from the, United, uh, from the European Union uh, who came to actually see what the army is doing, their role they, they are playing in ensuring safety of lives and properties in Nigeria. And um, the, the visit was actually an test one where the chief of army staff actually rolled out some of the things the army was actually doing to ensure that Nigerians go out to exercise their franchise. The meeting was, not, was, was actually based on uh, trying to improve the relationship between the Nigerian army and its populace. Let's get to that meeting now. The 2019 general election has generated a lot of interest both from local and international groups and organizations, most especially because of the role Nigeria plays in the continent of Africa. It is very important the government and people of Nigeria ensure the smooth conduct of the 2019 general elections. After the conduct of the Presidential and National Assembly elections of 23rd February and considering the role the Nigerian Army played in the elections, a delegation from the European Union Elections Observation Mission led by the Deputy Chief Observer Hannah Roberts paid a fact-finding visit to the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Yusuf Buratai to compare reports and look at challenges and security issues that was encountered during the February 23rd elections. As you know, we, with the European Union Election Observation Mission, have been in Nigeria at the request of INEC, and we arrived in early January. 
We also, in addition to a core team of some 10 experts, have 40 what we call long-term observers who are deployed in teams of two around the country. They've been out in their different locations, their 20 different locations, visiting all the states in Nigeria since the 21st of January. We were invited to observe both the federal elections and the state level elections. So we've obviously completed one part and we have a big day coming up on Saturday. We'll then stay for some weeks afterwards and in a few months we'll return with our chief observer and we'll be issuing a final report with recommendations for improvements in the electoral process. We've been here as the European Union for all of the previous elections since 1999, always upon invitation. During the time that we've been here, we've met with a range of stakeholders, a range of people involved in the election, both here in the capital, but also through our observers on the ground and in the different states across the country. We've met with some of your colleagues previously, but are very glad to have this opportunity to meet with you yourself, especially at this busy time. And it's very important for us to understand a little more of some of the security challenges that there are in such an extensive operation as an election in Nigeria and the way that uh, your services have approached this, some of the challenges that you've had and the way that you see things going forward. Lieutenant General Buratai thanked the delegation for coming and assured them that the Nigerian army is only out to assist the Nigerian police to forestall breakdown of law and order, judging from history of elections in Nigeria. The Nigerian army is not strictly involved in the election process. We are on a standby arrangement to support the Nigeria, Nigerian police force and other security uh, agencies. We have a distinct and clear constitutional provision that requires us to come to the aid of the civil authority when called upon. And this time around, we are required to support the civil authority, uh, the police being the key or the leading agency uh, in the internal security and especially these elections. So we've been there as in the background to support the civil police. However, you, you have seen from what transpired in, uh, on 23rd of February during the presidential elections, there were some cases of uh, ballot box snatching, to agree, killings, and even our officers who were out to support the police were killed, um, injured, and so on. Uh, number of people were killed, unfortunately. So basically, we are there to provide security in aid of the police. Uh, almost all our involvement in the security were based on the request by the Nigerian police to do that and other security agencies. And I, as I told you in my office just before we came in, uh, the issue of manpower, uh, the issue of logistics, you know, are quite an enormous challenge to the Nigerian police. And uh, we have to come to support them at this period in, in order to have a very peaceful relations. And from all assessments, uh, the 23rd February generations was uh, peaceful and uh, was done under an atmosphere of uh, you know peace where the electorates were able to discharge their civic responsibilities without let or hindrance. Um, tracing back from our own experiences over the years, if you see the elections history over the years, right from independence, uh, 
uh, the outcome had always been very, very volatile, which has led from one crisis to the other across the country. And uh, one of the remote causes of the civil war, unfortunate civil war, you know, it was a result of uh, you know the crisis that arose from the elections, uh, you know, within that period, and subsequent crises and uh, the instability in the polity, you know, has some genesis, you know, are traced to the crisis, you know, during elections. So having learned our lessons as a professional military, we must be ready at all times to support the civil authority. I'm very much sure the international community will not like to see a destabilized Nigeria. We will not like to see Nigeria is conflagrated into a you know, serious crisis that uh, the lives and properties of Nigerians and even the foreigners are endangered. So, uh, we must be ready to support the civil authority at all times. So the impression created in some quarters that we are interfering is far, far from it. We are doing our professional responsibility as provided in the Constitution. And uh, only those who do not wish the country well, and only those who benefit from the insecurity and the crisis that they generate will cry against the military, you know, supporting the civil authority, supporting the police to do their job. Left Nigeria Buratai, however, assured the delegation that the Nigerian army will remain apolitical and professional in its conduct during and after the elections. Shuli Daniels, Security Report, Abuja. Welcome back from that report. Welcome back. Um, now, still on the Nigerian army, um, the Nigerian army, um, Left Nigeria Tuku Yusuf Buratai, have been receiving um, lots of commendation from international ob um, observers. I think um, this this uh, commendation, Mr. Ernest, I don't I don't know if now it's 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 it's, it's a, a kind of appreciation to the Nigerian Army through the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Buratai, for their role in ensuring that the Nigerian the Nigerians are safe all through the election. I, I, I think I think it's it was a self souvenir they actually presented to a general, which he in turn actually came to present to the chief of army staff yeah, himself. Exactly, and 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 you know, Ernest, I, I don't know, you know, I think this is going to boost the Nigerian army the more, you know, yeah. make helping them to do putting more effort in doing their job. I don't know. I I wish I, in fact, I wish I'm in the army right now. <laughs> well, the truth remains that the Nigerian army actually played a very significant role in ensuring that this next 2019 election was actually a success. And let's get you that, um, that commendation now. We shall be tough on those who plan to wreak or disrupt the electoral process. I therefore want to appeal to Nigerian youths to shun any attempt by any politician to use them to perpetrate any form of violence as we mourn the death of the young officer and soldiers killed on the course of their lawful duty during the recently held elections. I want to assure their families that their death will not be in vain. In line with the tradition of the Nigerian army, they will be given heroic burial as they indeed are the heroes of our democracy. I have directed that their full entitlement be made, be paid let no one be in doubt that those disparate politicians and criminals that attacked our troops in the course of carrying out their legitimate duties will be tracked down and brought to justice. We have all seen the advantages of the Nigerian army 
Situation Room for Election Security Monitoring. This laudable innovation to security monitoring has received accolades from different quarters and already promoting interagency cooperation. There is no doubt it assisted us in timely decision making and more timely response to situations. I want to urge all commanders to further key into the platform. As we take decisions and respond, we must have at the back of our minds that the Army must remain professional and apolitical all through the electoral process. The successes of the Nigerian Army under the leadership of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukusu Buratai, in ensuring the protection of Nigeria's territorial integrity and support to internal security, especially in the fight against insurgency and terrorism, have continued to receive commendations and awards from local international organizations and institutions. Recently, the African Leadership Magazine honored the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukusu Buratai, as the African Leadership Person of the Year 2019, for his outstanding contribution to the security architecture of Nigeria, which has sustained and increased Nigeria's position as a giant of Africa. In a later development, the Pakistani army presented a souvenir to the Nigerian Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukusu Buratai, for his leadership and resilience to the defeat and putting an end to the dead devil terrorist group Boko Haram and other forms of insurgency and unrest the country will be faced to it, changing the narrative from what it was before June 2015 when Lieutenant General Buratai assumed office as the Chief of Army Staff. The presentation was made by Major General Sisi Musa, Director of the Nigerian Army Farms and Ranches, on behalf of the Pakistani Army. So, in line with your vision and the achievements you've made so far in the Nigerian Army, which has impacted positively to the Nigerian Army and the country in general, you approved adding a team to Pakistan to visit their remount legendary and farms call which was established since 1902. Uh, Pakistan being a friendly army to the Nigerian army took the advantage and also exposed us to other avenues where they are succeeding, knowing that we are equally facing the same challenges, especially in the Northeast. In view of that, they also presented us and showed us around their Pakistan Ordnance Factory, heavy duty factory where they manufacture vehicles, the counter IED units, the dog section, all with a view to project what their capacities and their capabilities that we're able to partner with the Nigerian Army to ensure that they do enhance our own capacity. It is in view of that that the Chief of General Staff. Lieutenant General Salah Ahalil requested that after the visit, when we come to return, we should ensure that we meet the Chief of Officer and give him a token souvenir to show their appreciation. But for being for the first time that the Nigerian Army is doing that, and for them also to be able to have the capacity to engage the acts of militancy that we're being faced. I have a singular honor so to appreciate you for approving that visit. It was an eye opener. We forwarded our report, and I know actions have been taken. It cost nothing less than 10 million naira equivalent. It is developed because of the challenges they are having. They use this to crossbreed with donkeys to produce mules. They use mules because of the capacity of the mules to climb uphill. The challenges they have in the north, in the northern part of Pakistan, the, the height is almost too. 22,000 feet above sea level, and no logistic level to, to go there. So they use these mules to take, uh, for example, a 1.5 millimeter hole with a, is disassembled into four, six parts. Each mule carries one part, takes 22,000 feet above sea level, and then it's assembled and it's used like a So it's in view of that, I say I should present this to people that is to see the capacity and tell them that the cost represents strength and sense of hope. Pakistani have been able to develop their own helicopter aviation in their units 
and have been performing remarkably well. And they have also offered as to be as mentors to Nigerian Army Ambition. And with that, they have also extended the uh, um, opportunity for the chief for them to post you at the one time, anytime you please. Responding to the presentation, Lieutenant General Buratai dedicated the awards and commendations to the officers and soldiers of the Nigerian Army. I want to believe that this is a recognition not only on me personally, but the collective efforts of uh, all the officers and men of the Nigerian Army. So this award, this commendation award, as I think I've captured is for all of us. So I want to most sincerely thank you for this honor. And I want to assure you that the Nigerian Army will do its best to ensure the African country, as well as our country, Nigeria, have the best in terms of professional conduct in order to ensure that there is uh, peace and stability in the country and the continent. This is what we all desire. And our role in stabilizing the security environment for democracy to thrive is uh, sacrosanct. And we must strive hard to ensure that peace and security is achieved throughout the continent. As you can see, this is the engineering period in Nigeria, uh, one of uh, the most challenging and indeed uh, very complex situation going on. But with the determination of the civil authority to have a free and fair election, we rest assured we will support the civil authority to do that. We are very much conscious of our role provided in the Constitution and we must work towards that to support the civil authority to ensure that it's peace and order and where the situation goes out of hand, we make sure that it's stabilized in the best interest of our country and for democracy to, to strive. With these commendations, awards and praises, According to the Nigerian Army, it is expected that they will continue to double their efforts in ensuring a safe and secure Nigeria, which will in turn attract economic growth and development. Ernest Enuniku, Security Report, Abuja. Yeah, welcome back. To, to, to whom much is given, much, much is, is expected. expected. Now with this commendation, we believe the Nigerian army will actually put in more effort to ensure that um, Nigerians are safe. Now, we must leave for other programs to continue. Hmm. We, we, we must leave. Um, I, I just wish we have more time to discuss a whole lot, you know, but then... Once again, we must uh, congratulate Nigerians for a successful 2019 general election. Elections. Though we experienced some little hitches in some few states, but generally, from our, our own perspective, the election was actually successful. peaceful and it was successful. Well, we must leave, as I said earlier, I remain yours and only, Ernest Enuniku. And Shuli Daniels. Bye for now. Bye for now.